Good morning and welcome to our service on this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity. A particular welcome to any of you who are finding us and joining us online for the first time. You're very welcome indeed. Last week I shared a, a short film we put together, some rather fun um, mistakes and uh, autocorrects with the subtitles. This week I thought I'd share with you a few of our favourite entries from parish magazines uh, in true Simon Manley Cooper fashion. He's a, a, a local priest who sometimes takes services here and always amuses us and the congregation by sharing one or two of these. And so, uh, as a tribute to you, Simon, uh, enjoy these.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together in this time of worship to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is read for us by Rosemary. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is not any God beside you whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you should not have ju judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness and your sovereignty over all causes you sp to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness and with great forbearance. You govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A gospel reading this morning is read for us by David. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your feed? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat among with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out, out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun, in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our granddaughter had a birthday recently. She turned five and among her birthday presents was a very interesting one. It was a ladybird breeding kit. It came with instructions and it came with a Perspex container full of ladybird larvae. This is what a ladybird larva looks like. And it came with all the nourishment that these larvae would need. So it was a case of watching and waiting, watching the larvae as they shed their skin several times as they grew, and then pupating. And then it was more waiting, waiting with not a, much to see, waiting for a, about a week until the ladybirds emerged from their shells. Once the ladybirds had emerged, they needed feeding. So I was able to provide plenty of aphids for them from my garden. Here you can see a ladybird feasting on one. Do hope you're not squeamish as you see the aphids wandering around inside the dish. The seed pods of the lupins in my garden were absolutely covered in aphids. So they provided a really lovely meal for the newly emerged ladybugs. Jesus' parable this morning, plus two other parables that weren't read this morning, but um, appear in that same section collected together by Matthew. They have the idea of waiting. The idea of call to patience. We have the farmer in the reading that we had waiting for harvest time. We have the birds waiting for the mustard seed to grow into a tree. We have the woman 
baking bread, waiting for the yeast to spread through the whole batch of dough. Now just a, a little bit of background to help us understand this. The weeds that are mentioned growing with the wheat are probably darnel. This is related to wheat, but it has a, a bitter taste and it can make you ill. It's virtually distinct, indistinguishable from wheat until the ears form. And the roots are stronger and would be entangled with the wheat. At the time of Jesus, people who were wanting to sort of get back at someone would sow that, would sow darnel as an act of revenge on someone. And such a serious crime was it that it was punishable in Roman law. So that's a little bit of explanation about the, the weeds and the wheat. I also want to say don't be alarmed as we might be by Jesus's description of fire and the weeping and gnashing of teeth. This was a, a Jewish saying to describe the fate of the ungodly as it was seen and not meant to be a literal outcome. We've rather been uh, deceived by all the medieval images um, of people being cast into fire. These were designed to frighten people into religious observance. We know that badness and wrongness, what we might call evil, continues to live side by side with goodness. But God doesn't sweep it under the carpet. He doesn't turn a blind eye. Evil will have its comeuppance, to use just some of the sayings of today. But a warning, if we think we know who or what the weeds are, we should beware our complacency or smugness. Slavery and colonization that we've heard so much about in the recent weeks shows that compliance with past evils will be judged by future generations. And we must ask the question, how will we be judged further down the line? And there are many people and we are among them still waiting for all, all people to experience equal treatment and equal opportunity. Now, at the time of Jesus, talk of God's kingdom, which these parables are about, would provoke a desire for immediate action. People wanted God to act now. They'd been waiting long enough for God to come and establish his kingdom. And we can be the same. Why doesn't God do something, especially with this crisis now? Doesn't God care? So much waiting. Waiting for lockdown to finally end. Wait, waiting for restrictions, although they are easing slowly, waiting for them to go completely. Waiting and wondering whether it will all come back to bite us. And waiting when we are going out and about because we have to book for things now. We have to book for the zoo. We have to book for National Trust properties. We have to book when we want to go to a restaurant. We can't be spontaneous. And there are endless waiting in queues. We are waiting to know, will I have a job to go back to when furlough ends? Will I have a job that will continue Waiting to know what will school be like in September? Will I have the same friends? Waiting to find out if I have a job when I leave school or university. Waiting to know when I will feel safe. When will they find a vaccine? And for me personally, waiting 
to know when I will be able to sing again with other people. So many questions without immediate answers. Even the government don't seem to know. Waiting can be so frustrating. It can sap our joy. It can make us feel empty, overwhelmed, afraid, out of control. But waiting can be positive. Waiting is a process. Much like the pupae waiting to become ladybirds. It's in the waiting that God grows his kingdom. It's in the waiting that God grows us. Our daughter in the last year of school had a painful breakup with a boyfriend and ran out of emotional energy. It was anxious waiting for A-level results. She had been given a place to study a drama degree. But when that waiting came to an end and the results came, they were not the grades that she'd hoped for. And while her friends were out partying, for her there was no celebration. Instead, she spent days and days cocooned in a duvet. A lot of waiting for her and for us. But eventually she emerged with fresh thinking and resolve and set herself in a new direction. She had been interested in animals, in nature, so she volunteered at a Christian organisation called Arosha, an environmental organisation. She volunteered at an animal sanctuary. She got work experience at a vet. And then she went on to get a degree in animal management. She then went off for three months to Zimbabwe, working at a conservation project with wild dogs, or what are called now, I think, painted dogs. One of her best experiences, one that she treasures. And now she is working for the Wildlife Trust, working to protect nature and the environment for us now, but also for the future and future generations. Before the pandemic, we may have been hoping and planning for many things which have now crumpled and vanished. If we hope in God, if we trust God in the waiting, then when the time is right, he will point us to the next direction. Now at the end of our granddaughter's breeding project of ladybirds comes the point at which they are released. And here she is getting her toothbrush, trying to capture a ladybird because she's going to put it on a leaf in the garden. And there were quite a few ladybirds to release in this way. Time for them to move on. If you look at a ladybird la larva, you wouldn't believe that it could turn into such a pretty little bug. And here's a little bit of information for you. Do you know what the collective noun is for ladybirds? It's loveliness. A loveliness of ladybirds. Isn't that nice? Perhaps as we emerge from our waiting, we too will be amazed at how God in his love has transformed us prepared and equipped us for the next stage in our journey.
let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our virtual choir sing the anthem, View Me, Lord. The words by Thomas Campion, set to the music of Richard Lloyd. Prayers this morning are led for us by Saxon. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our lives here on earth and for providing us with everything we need to live happy and fulfilling lives. We pray that we may use these resources with care and respect and ask for the strength to carry out our work that you would have us do and to reciprocate the true love you have for all your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for all denominations in your church throughout the world, that we may all be open to receive your grace we pray especially for our own church here in St Mary's and especially for our vicar, Will, and his family, together with the many who assist and support him and the, and the parish. In so many ways, we give thanks for the work of the care group, the doctors, nurses, the NHS, staff, and all who have been working tirelessly in these difficult circumstances for the benefit of us all. We give thanks for the wonderful way so many people have responded so positively to this COVID-19 epidemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we remember all those caught up in corruption, selfishness, greed, drugs, depression, who rely solely on material things for happiness, and pray that they may be given a glimpse of how a spiritual life could open up for them a life of true happiness, love and eternal life. We pray for those in places of responsibility, for our government, that they will have the inspiration and courage to do the right thing at the right time, in the difficult times that lie ahead. May we all have the courage to look objectively at our lives and identify what changes could, be, could and should be made in our post-crisis lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember all those who are physically sick and mentally unwell, and we pray for all who look after them. We pray for those who have entered into the fullness of glory and for the loved ones recently departed. We remember those whose years mind occurs at this time and pray for all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, grant us the grace to desire thee with our whole heart, so that, desiring thee, we may seek and find thee, and loving thee may we hate and, and, and loving thee may hate those sins which separate us from thee for the sake of, of Jesus Christ. And finally, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing together the hymn, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. <laughs>
let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.